Good morning. I'm in my outdoor office first Wednesday morning. I've been here with you with a cup of coffee in a couple of weeks. I hope your day is off to a good start. Mine is so far. <clears throat> Wednesday where we're looking forward to second night of vacation Bible school here in my little corner of the kingdom. But for the morning, I'm going to be reflecting on the lectionary gospel reading for this coming Sunday. <clears throat> the, um, in case you don't know what that term lectionary means, um, I get in the late 80s, I think in that time frame, there was some um, ecumenical group of scholars got together and put together a series of readings for every Sunday to be sort of as a guide that preachers could use in selecting texts. And so for every Sunday, there's a gospel reading, an epistle reading, like one of the New Testament letters, an Old Testament reading, and then a reading from the Psalms. And that's divided, and it's divided into you know, three, three years. Um, in one year, the most of the gospel lessons are from Mark. The next year, most of them are from Matthew. And the third year, most of them are for Luke. And this is the year where Luke is the gospel. Um, the gospel of Luke is powerful. Um, my favorite gospel is always the one that I happen to be reading at the current time. Um, but for today, I'm going to be looking at Luke chapter 12. And it's a parable that it's not as, I guess, not as well known as the Good Samaritan or um, certainly not as well known as the Prodigal Son. All oh, but it's good. Now Luke 12. And I'm looking at verses 13 to 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a, of a rich man produced plentifully. And he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger barns. And then I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this very night your soul is required of you, and the things you have, all you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who has laid up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And that last portion there, And God said to him, Fool, this very night your soul is required of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? And so is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich for God. The parable of the ritual. Um, so to set the stage for this, um, Jesus and his disciples are slowly walking in, from Galilee towards Jerusalem. And if you want to be really geographic about it, um, he's probably some probably walking along the Jordan River. Um, hadn't quite gotten Jericho yet. There's a motorcycle needs a muffler. Um, he's drawn some. He's drawn some people. Um, some onlookers, some fans, some believers, and we don't know what category this this man is. We don't know which category he's in, whether he's just an onlooker of 
a fan or a believer, um, and he asked Jesus this question. Tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Um, and we know nothing of the request. We don't know whether um, it is a legitimate request. In that culture, the, the eldest brother got, got the lion's share of any inheritance. Um, younger brothers got inheritance, but not as much. And we don't know whether this guy had an older brother who wasn't giving any of the inheritance, or whether he was asking an older brother for more inheritance than what he might have been entitled to. We don't know. <clears throat> and Jesus never addresses that question. But rather what Jesus does is he makes a number of really important points rather subtly. Um, <clears throat> the first thing to mention is money is one of the things that Jesus talked about the most. I've heard some people say that it's what Jesus talked about more than anything else aside from the kingdom of God. Um, <clears throat> I know he talked about it a lot, whether it's that much, I don't know, but money was something that he talked about a lot. And how we handle our money, how we handle our possessions, does say a lot about the state and the nature of our faith. Like I said, Jesus doesn't directly answer the man's question. That's sort of immaterial. <clears throat> and so Jesus tells this parable. The rich man his land produces plentifully and as it produces plentifully and the crops come in and he realizes my barns are big enough so is not the, lo the logical thing to do to build more barns and to build bigger barns <clears throat> and so far he seems to be doing nothing more than any of us would do when we you know, save up for a rainy day, the proverbial rainy day, whatever that is. So he builds bigger barns and better barns, and stores away all his grains, and then God tells him, your life is over. And your soul is required of you this very night. Um, and by soul, really, think, think life here. Um, don't think soul is in spirit or something. Think your soul, your life is required of you this night. Um, and we've all heard the expression, you can't carry it with you, that never seen a hearse pulling a U-Haul trailer. Um, <clears throat> and so the rich fool is condemned for laying up treasures for himself and not being rich toward God. And so the operative question is this. When we consider this <clears throat> the rich fool, as he's called. What should he have done? What should he have done that would have garnered praise from Jesus? Um, what is it to be rich toward God? <clears throat> um, first, think about the pronouns. Think about the pronouns. There's an awful lot of my and I in this in this parable. It's my crops and my grain and my barns and my soul. Awful lot of eyes and mys. You know, the man doesn't speak with anybody else. He's speaking entirely within himself. He thought to himself, I will do this. I will say to my soul, my mother soul is considered. Salty. He's just thinking to himself. And this leads to the answer that the problem is that he is totally he's self-absorbed, self-consumed. I've got all of this bounty. What should I do? He's thinking within himself. What should I do with my grain and my crops and my barn?
what should he have done? So think about that. What should he have done? First, I think there are two things. First, he seemingly totally forgot or ignored that God is the ultimate source of his bounty. Um, ultimately, God is the source of everything we have, directly or indirectly. And it all comes from God. Whatever, how much or little we have, it all comes from God. Um, and the second thing is he ignored the community around him. He ignored whatever community needs there might have been around him. Um, St. Augustine is reported to have said this. And then I, I quote what is attributed to St. Augustine. He did not realize that the bellies of the poor were much safer storerooms for his bounty than his arms. According to Augustine, he would have been far better off to have distributed some of his wealth um, to the needy in his community. And can't argue with that. And so he forgot where his bounty came from. He regarded it totally as his own to dispense as he saw it. It's his. It's my crops and my barns. It's mine. And he thinks entirely within himself. He never prays. He never consults anybody else. And so we can begin that's when we can begin trying to um, apply this parable. What, what do we do when we come into some sort of um, financial blessing? Some sort of financial windfall? How do we respond? How can we respond when we come into some, some sort of financial windfall? How can we respond that would not fall into the trap or the pit that the rich fool fell into. But to begin with, we can use some of it to benefit somebody else. Use some of it to benefit somebody else, some other cause, some other person in your community. We can use some. We can use some of it. Um, give it to whatever your local church is. I, now you know, not all of it, but um, if we do that, then we avoid the the trap that the rich young fool fell into. It's not ours. It's not ours. Whatever wealth we have, however great, however small, ultimately comes from God. Directly or indirectly, if we made it by our own hard work, who gave us the skill and who gave us the energy to do the work, ultimately it all comes from God. And ultimately, we cannot carry any of it with us. We should prepare for the rainy day. And that's prudent. That's wise. And I don't think Jesus would, would condemn anybody for doing that. But um, in saving up for the rainy day, in handling whatever windfall we might get from time to time, we cannot do it without forgetting that it all comes from God and that we can use some of it. We can be rich toward God. We can be rich toward God by contributing something to His church, by helping others around us. We can be rich toward God and at the same time Look, you know, prepare for the rainy day. This is one of those cases where, 
Jesus said in the parable is incredibly practical. It is incredibly practical, and it's worthy of always reflecting what is it to be rich toward God. Jesus condemns covetousness and he tells his listeners here tells his listeners to be rich toward God and so apply that to your lives what is it to be rich toward God so ponder upon that and I hope that the rest of your Wednesday is good